You are watching Cold Fusion TV. Hi, welcome to another Cold Fusion video. To go go here. Today, the smartphone is an integral part of the lives of many people around the world. We are at the start of a technological revolution, a revolution so rapid in advancement and universal adoption that nothing like it has ever been seen on the face of this earth. And I think by the end of this production, you might agree. Mobile technology is the world's fastest growing industry after all. But with growth this fast, the question must be asked, are things starting to get a bit stagnant? In some markets, the answer is leaning towards yes. For example, in the United States, smartphone market penetration went from a mere 18% in the year 2010 to 72% just four years later in 2014. So we're running out of headroom here. The market may be beginning to saturate, but that doesn't mean the industry isn't going to innovate. I actually think the smartphone industry is just getting warmed up and many innovations await us. So the big question is, where is this all going and what is there in store for the future? Well, let's answer that today and take a look at what the future may hold. This video will be broken up into three parts in regards to the future of the smartphone. Form, function, and performance. Okay, so let's begin. Form. I remember in the early 2010s when people were talking about flexible phones that could change their shape depending on what you wanted to use it for. Although it's nice to dream, the reality is, a phone is one of the most complex mass-produced consumer products in history. A typical phone includes highly integrated circuits, a wide array of sensors and processors, and not to mention a battery that would explode if you were to puncture it. For a phone that changes shape to happen, the manufacturing methods of internals would have to be radically and fundamentally changed. Until then, a truly free-form phone is still a pipe dream, albeit a very nice one. That being said, I do see curved screens like that on the Galaxy S6 Edge, or at least 2.5D screens like that on the iPhone 6 and original Note 4, as becoming more commonplace. Really, it's just a natural feeling for our fingers and allows for extra functionality, which is always good for software designers to stretch their creativity. I also think that front-facing speakers like that in the HTC M series make perfect sense on large screen phone tablets. And as the form factor finds its groove as a personal entertainment device, we could be seeing more front-facing speakers in the future. Okay, so those are the basics of form. What about something revolutionary and exciting? Enter modular designs. So this is the premise. If phones are becoming, or already are, mini computers, why not just have swappable parts like their desktop forefathers? Initiatives like PhoneBlocks and Project Ara by Google plan to do just this. Instead of buying a brand new phone every time you need to upgrade a component, now all you'd have to do is just slot in a new module for that part. For example, if your camera needs upgrading, just slot in a new one. If your screen breaks, slot in another one. If you need more RAM or a faster processor, no problem. If phone prices stay elevated as they are now and phone product life cycles stay at about one year, modular phones may gain some market share in the next five to ten years. Alright, so let's move on to the next section. Function. This area has huge potential. Right now, today, your phones can be used for almost any casual task, but the phones in the future will be encompassing your entire digital life. Anything from social media presence, to payment, to even your driver's license. With the aid of cloud computing and machine learning, the healthcare industry would also be impacted by giving more control to the patient. The Wall Street Journal did a report on the future of healthcare through mobile technology. In this report, a working example of the future was given by cardiologist Eric Topol and goes as follows. I quote, Let's say you have a rash that you need examined. You could snap a picture of it with your smartphone and download an app to process the image. Within minutes, a dedicated computer algorithm can text to you your diagnosis. The message could include next steps such as recommending a topical ointment or a visit to a dermatologist for further assessment. He goes on to say that smartphone users will be able to perform physical exams on themselves. Apps are already being developed to handle all aspects of the eye, the throat and oral cavity, and the lungs and heart. He goes on to say that in the next 10 years, nanotechnology in the bloodstream could allow for phones to constantly monitor all of our organs for something like the very early signs of cancer. So that's a pretty interesting concept to think about. Alright, so let's move on a bit. Let's talk about mobile virtual reality. 
I'm predicting that this is going to be huge in the future with an entire spin-off industry just for this niche. Mobile VR totally makes sense in a serendipitous way. Since there are already no wires as compared to today's early VR PC methods, all you would really need is a wireless gaming controller and you could probably get a somewhat immersive experience anywhere, anytime. We help you manage wires while you're playing. That's right, we love the Gear VR, we think it's a great device and you're right, the fact that you're not tethered gives you that, that extra feeling of for freedom. Uh, it makes it much more immersive, yeah, we love it. Although mobile VR games will probably be simpler than the PC counterparts, there's still plenty of potential here. So that's pretty cool, but what about the future of mobile software? As it turns out, within the mobile industry, the flow of capital is already slowly starting to go from the hardware into the software development. So with more money, we're bound to get better apps for a wider reach of uses. More advanced applications are a great thing, but at the end of the day, these apps have to run on an operating system. And I think many of you would agree that there's still a lot of room for improvement there. Of course, sure. Android 5.0 and iOS 8 are pretty great, but they're kind of basic when you compare them to macOS or Windows 10, and even basic when you compare them to what smartphones might require in the future. In my opinion, in the future, I think we'll start to see mobile software that supports full desktop working environments, with integrated support for a keyboard, mouse, and external desktop monitor. All your work and data will be synced to the cloud, so the main idea is that you can get your work done anywhere, anytime, with absolutely no restrictions. This idea of the PC and phone coming together may sound familiar to some of you out there, and that's because it's been done before by Ubuntu. Ubuntu had the right vision with their mobile PC convergence software, but they had arrived way too early. The market still isn't ready, and neither is the consumer. Alright, so let's move on. In terms of battery life, today's battery life will be a joke. There are already numerous battery technologies that are on their way up, such as graphene and silicon energy storage, and organic batteries from companies such as StoreDot. If these technologies don't get suppressed, we should be in for a treat in terms of longer lasting devices. We're talking 10 times the energy density and a battery life of weeks instead of a day or so. This can only happen if a free market environment exists that far in the future. Before we finish off this section, I just want to touch on one last thing, cameras. Phone cameras definitely have a lot of room for improvement, and I think in five years, they'll be much better than they are today. Perhaps 40 megapixels are standard, some pretty good depth of field, superior low light performance, and one thing that I think is gonna really increase is the capacity for high speed recording. I'm talking in the tens of thousands of frames here. And of course, super HD video recording like 6K and above. All right, so we're almost done. Let's move on to the last section. Performance. In previous videos, whenever I've talked about mobile performance and how it's doubling every year and currently sits on the level of about a 2005 PC, it seems to cause a bit of controversy, even with hard numbers. But today, this concept goes a bit further with the Tegra X1, but we'll get to that in a second. First, a little bit of what could be coming. In terms of mobile power, I think that 2016 to 2017 will probably be the years of truly capable gaming mobile hardware. Today, we're already starting to see glimpses of that, Take the NVIDIA Tegra X1 as a case study. This so-called mobile superchip has 256 graphics cores, 8 processing cores, and can generate 4K video at 60Hz, not to mention that it can run the cutting-edge game engines that today's PCs always run. Is that amazing, guys? Now, that was not a video. That was all run in real time. You were seeing Unreal Engine 4 running Elemental, the demo done by Epic. Everything was done in high dynamic range lighting, which basically means each one of the pixels, the RGB, are all floating point. Exactly the same engine that runs on a high-end PC, exactly the same engine that runs in a next generation game console. Tegra X1. Just two years ago, to perform feats less than half as impressive took 300 watts of power. And today with the X1, it just takes 10 watts. According to NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang, the Tegra X1 can run at one teraflop. Okay, so what, you might be thinking. Well, let's put that into perspective. This is the supercomputer ASCI Red. It became fully operational in the year 1997 and was the first supercomputer to reach one teraflop. And it held that record till the year 2000. This computer took up a large room and required 10,000 Pentium Pros to run and used 1 million watts. And now, as you know, today in 2015, we can reach a similar performance on a mobile chip. And next year, this performance is set to double again. Are you starting to see the picture of progress now? It's all truly incredible. 
Okay, so how is this happening and how can mobile ships be moving so fast, almost worlds apart from where they were in just 2012? Well, the answer comes in two words, research money. The smartphone industry, as I've said numerous times, is huge. It's a booming market that is sustained by massive revenues coming in each quarter. All mobile chip manufacturers have a clear motive to spend large amounts of research and development money. And when colossal amounts of money is spent in research alone, what people thought was impossible four years ago becomes a reality. But some of you guys who are technologically inclined will be asking, wouldn't we be running into heat issues? Aren't we going to hit a brick wall in terms of how many transistors we can fit on there? And these are very good questions. As it turns out, some researchers are saying that we're only a couple of years away from getting around such issues. So assuming that we circumvent current manufacturing limits, in about 5 to 10 years time, we will definitely end up with phones that are as powerful as today's desktops. And just to be clear, this doesn't mean that one day everyone's just going to wake up and their PC has been replaced by a smartphone. All I'm saying is that the smartphone of the future will be as powerful as a PC today. PCs will always have specialized uses. In conclusion, the mobile industry is like nothing we've ever seen before. And because of this, we are living in a truly incredible time. I hope this video has sparked your imagination a little bit, and I trust that you learned some new information. Anyway, thanks for watching, and as usual, don't forget to share this with a friend, and subscribe if you're new and want to see some more cool stuff. Hey guys, Dagoga here. Thanks for watching the whole way through my video. It was just a little bit of a fun look at uh, what the future of mobile technology could actually bring. So I hope you enjoyed it and got something out of that. And, um, and yeah, I thought it was just a bit of what could be in store for the future. So anyway, I'll let you guys go and uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, share it with a friend if you think they'll be interested and uh, subscribe if you're new. Thanks guys, have a good one. Cheers. Cold Fusion, it's new thinking.